Okay, testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing one, two. If you're just joining us on Periscope and Twitter, thank you very much for sharing a part of your Monday evening with me and taking a look in just a little bit as to what's going on uh, with the complete forecast. So stay tuned for more on that. Getting things set up here. I've got the phone here in the lower corner of your screen, uh, just out of sight, trying to make certain that we're able to see a little bit more about what's going on with our Facebook friends out there for tonight doing the triple threat for this evening. And if you have any plans for outdoors tomorrow, we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Looks like that is working pretty well. Sorry about that. We'll hang on a second while we get this taken care of real quick. Make sure everybody knows that we're out here and... That should be a little bit quieter there. Sorry about that. Okay, let's go ahead and get our Facebook friends into this and show everybody more about what's going on out there for tonight. If you have it again, into again the rest of the next couple of days, taking a look at chances of showers and thunderstorms for tomorrow, but mainly keeping an eye on what's going on in the tropics. A lot of questions tonight as to what's going on in regards to Irma, which direction it's going, the latest information that we have with the computer models, some of the most advanced out there, not fake weather for those of you who are calling it that, it's just the best that we have, and there's still always going to be uncertainty in trying to figure out which way these things go, but trying to make certain that everybody knows ahead of time what the possibilities are, that's the most important thing. And trying to make certain that we do not spread around any fake information, that's going to be one of the best things that we can possibly do. So if you have any plans, again, for outdoors for the next couple of days, this is going to be, again, what we're going to be taking a look at. And it looks like Facebook is, once again, big surprise, having problems at this time. So we'll have to see what we can do about getting this taken care of while we're talking about things. While we're trying to get everybody back online on Facebook, let's take a look and see what's going on in and around the area. When it comes to clouds, which isn't a lot for tonight, from the St. Francis camera for tonight, not that much happening at this time. We do have, again, some areas of clouds here and there, but beyond that, really just not that much going on at this point, and probably not going to be expecting too much of anything throughout the rest of the evening. Now, as we get into tomorrow, that's where we see, again, the possibility of more clouds across the Mid-South and the potential for some more rainfall. We'll talk about that coming up here in just a little while. Currently seeing, again, little, if anything, taking place into the area for tonight, where it comes to anything involving uh, showers or thunderstorms across much of the area. Again, fairly quiet for this evening across much of the area. And for the rest of the forecast, again, should be, again, decently quiet, but we also see, again, that potential for showers and thunderstorms, especially into tomorrow. But we'll talk more about that coming up here uh, in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that. Again, the rest of the forecast for right now is showing, again, a little, if anything, in the way of major amounts of problems taking place. Uh, if Facebook is going to behave itself, we'll give it another try here and see what goes on. And take two on this. How long it's going to last, we have no idea. But that's live broadcasting or live netcasting for you. So once again, on Facebook, if you are just joining us, thank you very much. They can discover the secret to this. Have face, Start Facebook off, close it down, then start it up again. Then things seem to work pretty well for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. If everybody's just joining on Facebook, weather over time for Monday evening, blah, blah, blah. You've heard that part before. Again, into the evening for tonight. Going to be seeing a few clouds out there, but more as we go into the rest of the forecast. And as of right now on radar, we're just really just not seeing that much of anything going on across much of the area for tonight. Pretty dry out there, very pleasant. No problems being seen on the forecast uh, throughout the rest of the area for tonight. So not seeing, again, too much to worry about here. But again, as we get into tomorrow, could be some possible problems out across the Mid-South. And we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Let's go ahead and get into things a little bit and show you more about what's going on. Interesting out west as we take a look at all the wildfires taking place into around the Intermountain West, around the Cascades, and into portions of the Colorado Rockies, especially into Montana. A few million acres burning out that direction. Not good news, again, for anything going on if you are traveling out that way. Again, seeing little, if anything, in the way of relief for them immediately, hopefully getting some more uh, activity up there. Cat Winston, welcome to the show and saying hello to Memphis. Paula Wicker Hamby, thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight. reason I show this, this is happening several hundred miles or maybe even a thousand or so miles away from us. So why am I showing this to you? Well, actually, if you take a look, it's interesting to note that the smoke over these fires are actually getting moved a little bit farther to the south and to the east. And as they do, they are going to be moving in a decent amount of smoke. And some of that smoke is strong enough to actually get shown on satellite detection networks 
And as you can see, the Mid-South area, right on down here toward the lower right-hand corner of your screen, that smoke is ble being blown right over portions of the Missouri River Valley and back into around the Mississippi. Now, some of this might settle on down to the south as that cold front makes its way a little bit closer to us, but beyond that, we're just not seeing too much of anything in the way of major problems, but you may catch the aroma of some smoke in the air if it's thick enough, and may even be some problems with uh, those of you with asthma out there tomorrow as this front helps to escort some of the smoke into the area from out west, so something to think about there. Uh, Shane Barnes, happy Labor Day back to you as well. Thank you very much. Alice McGowie, thank you very much for joining us from uh, Wyatt, Mississippi, and Bozo Woolfolk from Senatobia. Thank you very much for joining us there. Let's go ahead and get into uh, what's going on here in the Mid-South area, which again does not really amount to much uh, for this evening. We are seeing the possibility, according to the National Weather Service, of some stronger weather coming our way into around Tuesday. And again, so far the confidence is not entirely high with this. Some stronger thunderstorms are going to be possible uh, into tomorrow at this time. Again, we see the potential of that cold front dropping on down, mainly northern Mississippi, but I would be watching this if you get up into around the I-40 corridor or so into the, around that area. Uh, Paula Wicker Hamby, Mount Montana fires or near Helena. I don't have a specific area about that in regards to what's going on with the fires, but we do have a lot of smoke into around uh, that particular area, so that's going to be drifting on through parts of the Midwest and quite possibly the Mid-South as well. We'll have more on the uh, current fire situation out there. CBS News has done a spectacular job in covering this. Uh, CBSNews.com, the CBS Evening News, a lot of updates there. And of course, with News Channel 3, we're keeping you updated as well. Lisa Fleming Morgan and welcome from Brighton, Tennessee, and also again seeing again the possibility of some uh, less amounts of smoke here than anything else, but we'll be watching that. Marsha Couples, thank you very much for the kind words. Uh, Michael Clark, a freak event have to occur to have a hurricane force winds. Uh, this far inland would the Mississippi River provide enough fuel to power a hurricane? Interesting questions and stay tuned. We'll be talking more about that specific topic coming up here in just a little bit. So very prescient of you to get that done. Uh, Derek Mink, a son in Pensacola. Irma concerns there. Bit early for certainty, that's true, but again, we'll talk about Irma coming up here in just a little bit, so everybody stay tuned for that. Want to concentrate on the Mid-South area for the first part of this. Now, currently, again, seeing little, if anything, taking place uh, directly in the area where it comes to major problems for tonight. We do see, again, some very mild conditions out across uh, much of the Mid-South. I'm going to put this up full screen so everybody on Facebook can take a look at this and see a little bit better as to what's going on. Currently seeing, again, low temperatures tonight, not all that low, only back into the lower to mid 70s or so and could be some showers starting up by very early tomorrow morning. Uh, that's where we see again more of the chances of rain as we get into very early on Tuesday. So getting the kids and you back to work or school could be again some problems out there with chances of showers and thunderstorms over spreading the area. That's our next front coming on through. Winds will be out of the southwest and notice way up here into around uh, the area close to northeastern Arkansas. That's where we're seeing the winds out of the north. And that's, whoops, hang on a second, lost my place. There we go. Uh, the wind's out of the north here. That's about 7 o'clock in the morning. By the time we hit about 1 o'clock, noon, 1 o'clock, somewhere in there, that front comes on through and winds switch to the north. And that's going to be bringing in some drier air. So by 10 o'clock, the rain sticks around. By 1 o'clock, the rain here starts to make its way out of the picture. And again, by the time we hit drive time home, there could still be some showers around. But by dinner time tomorrow, pretty much everything is gone, heading on down to the south and east, and there's really just not that much left over at this time, so good news on that. Uh, cooler tomorrow night with that cold front coming on through, lower to mid-50s across much of the area. And by the time we hit Wednesday, some beautiful high temperatures out there. Numbers back into the mid to upper 70s for highs. Plenty of sunshine. No big problems being seen across much of the area, so looking pretty good on that. Going ahead and skipping toward Friday, high temperatures remain pretty mild back into the mid to upper 70s. Plenty of sunshine there. And likewise, the weekend coming up also looks pretty good. Highs on Saturday, mid to upper 70s. Highs on Sunday, 
probably a little bit closer to about 80 degrees, but a beautiful spate of weather over the next several days. No major problems being seen, so definitely some good news uh, on that at this point in time. Let's go take a look at severe weather tonight. Severe weather threat is just north of us, and again, we could see the possibility of some thunderstorms uh, directly in the Mid-South late tonight. But as of right now, the really good news is that tomorrow uh, the Storm Prediction Center is not really giving us that much of a threat. The green area you see here is just a generic thunderstorm threat. We don't have anything specific in the way of severe weather taking place. It looks like for now, but that could change into tomorrow. What we're going to be looking for, again, is going to be mainly in the morning and then dwindling by afternoon. Let's take a look at the hourly forecast. Again, the bar graphs that we show to you here, giving us an idea as to what's going on through tonight into tomorrow. Again, by about midnight into tomorrow morning around drive time, chances of rain and also some thunderstorms in this area. And that's also where the lightning uh, really starts to ramp up and that'll be a possibility by the time the kids hit the school bus to school and home again that we could be seeing some pretty decent amounts of thunderstorms out there. Betty Smith, thank you for stopping on by. Appreciate you uh, watching the show for tonight and thanks for being a viewer. Uh, that's going to be the main thing. And then by tomorrow night dinner time, that's going to be about it as the drive Drier air takes over, precipitation really ramps down, clouds start to clear out of here, and we get some very dry air as the winds switch to the north, and we get some fairly clearing, good clearing skies out across uh, much of the Mid-South. So not that bad, but keep it tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you updated on that potential. All right, the tropics. Let's see what's going on out there. And as of right now, again, we are watching with a lot of interest. We have a couple of systems, actually. A system that is developing into the Gulf of Mexico, down toward the Bay of Campeche. This one shows a maximum of about 60% development. Uh, this, again, could wander up to around Houston. Yes, I know exactly what we don't need to hear. Another one is following Irma. This one, the National Hurricane Center, is giving a uh, odds of about 80% of developing at this time. So that could be something to talk, take a look at. The main thing we're taking a look at now is, of course, Irma. It's a Category 4, winds of nearly 140 miles per hour. This thing is a major destructive hurricane. We've got uh, hurricane warnings up for the Leeward Islands around Puerto Rico. We've got hurricane watches in effect. And it seems right now that through the next few days, this is where the storm is going to be going. If you're planning on heading to Orlando, the University of Memphis Tigers football team is going to be playing Central Florida this Saturday. Now, so far, it appears that Irma is going to be staying well on down to the south of that. Could be making some problems for Cuba and the Bahamas. This is just the latest forecast information that we have. So steadily on a west-northwest passage for the most part and avoiding most of Florida. Now this is as far as the National Hurricane Center goes with its forecast. This is where we see again that cone of uncertainty. This thing means that it could the center of the storm could go anywhere in this area. So it could follow this lower area area down toward the area of Hispaniola, uh, around Haiti, and between there and Jamaica. That is where we could see the storm go, or it could go as far north as the main part of the Bahamas and aiming toward around Miami. So again, anywhere in this area is a possibility, but it looks like by about early afternoon Saturday, it's going to be right into around Key West, the Straits of Cuba, and just south of the area of the Grand Bahamas. That's where we're going to be seeing the problem there again for later on tonight. Uh, Jeremy Feathers, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Julia Cavallo, uh, welcome to the show as well, and welcome to joining us from Walls, Mississippi tonight. Again, through this next couple of days, we're going to be watching this with a lot of interest to see uh, what goes on with this, but I want to share with you a few more of the extended models that we've been showing on here and giving you an idea as to what's going on. And this is all leading up to a point, and we'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. First of all, I want to show you what is called the European model, uh, the Euro as it's known in meteorological parlance. All of these lines on here are one form of a model, one model run per line. And this one, again, shows a very good amount of agreement right on through the time it gets to about Cuba or so underneath all those lines that you see on screen. Then it takes a solid, pretty much right turn northward. Some of them are taking it skirting up the east coast. Some of them are taking it into the Gulf of Mexico, but the bulk of them writing the conventional wisdom, as it were here, to be able to say, 
that it looks like it's going to go toward Cuba right around Key West. It's expected to make a turn northward. Now that means, again, the atmosphere is going to help to guide this thing northward. So anything between, according to this model, Miami uh, into the Georgia, the Carolinas, uh, eventually toward Virginia, this is where we could see this storm go. Now this is the European and what is seen as the more accurate model. The GFS, the American model, less accurate and sometimes given to fits of overindulgence, you might say, in a way. Uh, this model kind of tends to over-exaggerate by just a bit, but that's the way these models work. They're programmed to be that way. Some of them are a little more conservative. Some of them are a little bit more over-eager, and that's the way we use these things in order to give you the information as to what's going on. Now, so far, the GFS is showing us, the American model is showing us that same track and starting to line up nicely as we look into around the area of Florida. So it looks like somewhere in between around the area of Saturday and Sunday, this storm is going to be aiming somewhere around southern Florida, Key West, Alligator Alley, Miami, back on up toward around Sarasota or Orlando. So if you're planning on heading there for one last summer fling or something of that going on, vacation happening, uh, this is something you're really going to have to watch. It's going to have to be amazingly watched, exceptionally careful uh, if you are heading this direction. A couple of our reporters at the station taking vacation to the Turks and Caicos and around the Bahamas over the last couple of days. I've heard about them wondering what's going on and helping them to understand more about what's happening. This, again, could be a thing to where you go there and you're going to have to turn right back around and leave. So it's really something to keep an eye on just to be, again, on the safe side about all this. Now, the other thing we've got a problem with is, again, the waters of the Gulf of Mexico and the Gulf Stream. They are exceptionally warm at this time. Uh, how warm? About the warmth you use when you take a shower somewhere in there, 90 degrees, a uh, decent temperature for that. And if you take a look, just right in the area between uh, Cuba, Jamaica, Hispaniola, the Bahamas, those red areas that are showing up, we are seeing some very good amounts of energy. And the National Hurricane Center has actually said in their statements that we do have a Category 4 storm on our hands. We could see some more strengthening with this. The winds a few hours ago were 130. Now they're at 140. And that means, again, we are very close to the possibility of seeing this thing maybe just maybe getting a little bit closer to Category 5, somewhere in there. Briefly, it may do so. I'm not anticipating landfall at that strength for right now, but again, this is a potential out there with that very warm water right over portions of the Gulf of Mexico and into around the Gulf Stream current. This thing could be a Category 5, possibly, but this is going to be, again, something we're going to be watching with a lot of interest, again, with uh, the National Weather Service. Uh, Bozo Wolfolk, thank you very much for stopping on by. Thank you uh, for watching the show. Deidre Roberts Bailey, thank you very much uh, for stopping on by for this evening. I do pr uh, appreciate that. Derek Mink, if you're still watching, uh, again, your son in Pensacola, I know, again, we would love to be able to tell you exactly uh, where this thing is going. There is some potential. I will say some, but it looks like that we are kind of on, Pensacola is kind of on the western edge of these models. So that's good news at this point. The bad news is that these things uh, will change. Now, the major portion of these, again, are showing the storm going right over the central peninsula of Florida and not wandering too much farther back to the west. So for uh, Mr. Mink and his son in Pensacola, Right now, it doesn't appear to be a major threat, but I would be edging toward getting prepared to get out of town if they can do that. Uh, again, this is nothing you want to be messing around with, so having an evacuation plan ready to go, as you should know about when you're in that area of the country, when you build down around the Gulf of Mexico or the East Coast, you've got to be prepared for stuff like that. So good luck to your son, uh, Mr. Mink. Hope everybody stays uh, safe down that direction at this time. Now, Mr. Clark, would a freak event have to occur uh, to have hurricane force winds this far inland. Actually, we did back with Katrina back in 2005. When Katrina made its way up the Mississippi Valley, it actually was able to carry enough energy with it to actually bring 
it was still a Category 1 hurricane by the time it hit Jackson, Mississippi. So we can see those storms bring enough energy with them. And as we just saw from Harvey a couple of days ago, we can also have enough energy to keep these things going for days on end. Now, that is a very good possibility. Matter of fact, in 2005, uh, the National Weather Service actually had to invent a new advisory because the storm was moving this direction into the Mid-South that was bringing all those winds with it of hurricane and tropical storm force winds. It wasn't a severe thunderstorm warning. It wasn't a tornado warning. And a high wind warning technically really doesn't even cover it. So that's why, if you take a look, that's about the first time the National Weather Service actually issued what was called a tropical storm wind warning. It's a real thing. We're not making it up. Uh, a lot of people accuse us of doing that just for ratings. does not happen that way. Uh, this is something that, again, was invented because of Katrina, because of the winds spiraling up this direction. Now, uh, with the Mississippi River, Mr. Michael Clark, uh, second question on there, would the Mississippi River provide enough fuel to power a hurricane? No, it would not. It might, maybe, if it was in flood stage, provide enough moisture for a few local thunderstorms. But the hurricanes that we see happening in the Gulf and the Atlantic Ocean, they sit right over their power source. And once the hurricanes go from the ocean over the land surface, they lose about 50% of their power automatically. And it's a good possibility that, again, it wouldn't do anything really to help anything out. The hurricane would bring its moisture on shore with it, as you saw from what happened with Harvey just a few days ago. But uh, some excellent questions on there. Thank you guys very much. Uh, for asking that. Uh, Mr. Clark uh, blew out power lines on Swinea. Swinea, I never know how to pronounce that name. Uh, unreal to see the wind do that, but yeah, that's exactly what happened right there. And uh, Mr. Mink, yes, glad to help out on that. Keep it tuned uh, to the National Hurricane Center and to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you updated on what's going on with the approach of this. Now, while I'm talking about this, and once again, uh, back on my soapbox for a little bit, a lot of people, including in my own uh, personal Facebook circles, and I'm sad to say a couple of my family members back in Kansas have been passing information along. Uh, this one from the Clarion Ledger newspaper, it uh, takes advantage of a uh, service, again, from like USA Today to pass along uh, information and articles and things like that. There are a couple of websites out there that are passing on information that uh, Irma could become a category six. There's a category of hurricanes from one through five. It's called the Sapphire Simpson scale. Uh, like tornadoes, you can only get a certain amount of power and a certain amount of width and power out of a tornado. You can't get anything else. There's just no way that the physics of the atmosphere can do anything else like that. So you've got some people out there that are doing a very good job of trying to stir up fear stir up panic and say, oh, great, cool, we can get a lot of people to click on my website and that'll increase my numbers. Really bad idea, okay? Not only is that not a ethical or professional thing to do, it's fake. It is absolutely, completely, and totally fake a Rooney. It is, I can't even begin to tell you how just absolutely fake that is. Now, theoretically, if you had a hurricane coming along and it was a strong one, like a Category 4 or 5, there is the possibility that if you had a giant meteor hit the hurricane dead center, all that heat energy could theoretically create what is called a hypercane, and you could have winds that could be much more powerful. But the odds of that are probably quite a lot more than you or I winning the lottery. So again, not possible. It is not possible to get a Category 6. And if you'll notice into around uh, some of these questions or some of these uh, comments that they've been saying right here. I'm going to try to zoom in on a couple of them so that you can see this. Uh, saying again that it could wipe entire cities off the map. Uh, it could also, where did it go here? Uh, right there. That's my favorite one right at the top. Panic-stricken Facebookers posting about the mega hurricane that could, in internet fact, quote, end life as we know it. Seriously, guys? I mean, Come on now, this that that that's 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 like I think the British call it OTT over the top. That is way over the top. Absolutely, completely, and totally ridiculously, stupidly fake. And that is just not possible. So if you see anybody passing these things along from these websites that are not run by scientists, 
that are more than likely science deniers from what they sound like on some of these things. And again, just denying the basic physics of the atmosphere, they do not happen this way. So something to think about uh, if you see these things out that direction. Uh, Michael Clark, thank you for the pronunciation on that. I do forget, I, f I apologize for that. With a name like Onik, you think that I would know how to pronounce things a little better. So thank you very much on that. Uh, again, if you see somebody passing this along and saying, oh my gosh, this is terrible, it's going to be ending civilization, stuff like that check the source and check who's saying it and then go back and see what the National Hurricane Center or the National Weather Service is saying not going to happen. There is no such thing as a Category 6. Okay, so there, I said it. I feel better now. So just so you know where we are on that. If you'd like to see this article and you'd like to know a little bit more about what's happening, all you have to do is go to my Facebook page. That's at facebook.com slash Austin Onik, W-R-A-G. Obviously, you know that because some of you are on there right now. And also on my Twitter page at twitter.com slash Aonic underscore W-R-E-G-3. Help you understand more about that. Our 7-day forecast and 7-10-day to day forecast at that is available at wreg.com slash weather if you'd like to know more about that. And be sure to join me for my complete forecast bright and early tomorrow morning on Talk Back Live with Bob and Josh on AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio. And again, it's also available live on TalkBackLiveNetwork.org. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Thanks for joining us for tonight. Questions, concerns, comments, go to this website right here, wreg.com slash weather. And a little farther up above that in the blue bar is my email address, austin.onik at wreg.com. Thanks to everybody for the great questions tonight. More updates on Irma, the non civilization ending hurricane Irma in the next few days. We'll talk about that as we go into tomorrow. We'll also keep an eye on what the weather's like for the rest of the week. All of that throughout the rest of the week on Weather Overtime on Facebook and also on again wrg.com. Thanks weather. Thanks to everybody for joining me tonight and more coming up with News Channel 3 on air and online throughout the rest of the week.